I think um, most people work with the idea, a lot of people work with the idea that you provide a certain set of resources to women and these resources they will be able to use in a way that will uh, promote their economic empowerment. And I think my problem with that is that there are two ways in which this kind of a model of change falls short of what it could achieve. So one is that if it does not take account of the broader structures that uh, constrain women's ability to take advantage of any new opportunities and so on, and those structures would be uh, you know, customary laws, uh, legal discrimination, uh, attitudes and you know, norms and so on, if you don't take account of those, then that is going to subvert or undermine your ability to provide interventions that translate into genuine changes in women's lives. So that's one, one set of problems. I think the other is I find that a lot of these interventions about women's economic empowerment tend to restrict themselves to a very, a very narrow set of outcomes. So they restrict themselves to things like, you know, are they, have they increased their savings? Do they have better businesses? And so on. But, you know, given that women, one of the most, um, if you like, structural inequalities that there are is the unequal division of paid and unpaid work, then simply promoting women's uh, abilities in the economic domain without taking any notice of all the things that constrain them, including the unequal division of labor at home, means that all you may end up doing is leaving women very tired as they try and balance these new economic opportunities with those old unpaid responsibilities. Um, so I would like people, when they think about economic empowerment, to think of it as a means to a broader end. And the broader end is to act on those structures, uh, including the unequal division of labor, including um, discriminatory laws and so on. Because that's the only, those are the only conditions under which these efforts to empower them will turn into something much more genuine, long-lasting and fair. Given that we are now in a kind of era where everything has to be measured, I think it's very, very important that we measure what we think we're measuring. So uh, I gave the example of people um, trying to measure empowerment by very trivial changes, which are completely meaningless, you know, whether you can purchase cooking oil, whether you can, um, you know, save a little more and so on. So I think one is that you must measure, you must be able to measure what you think you're measuring. But two is, I think you should not be so narrow in your measurements. So if you, empowerment, women's empowerment is going against the grain of centuries old structures. It has to be a little ambitious. So even if the ambition is for the long run, that long run goal should be an ambition one, ambitious one, even if the intermediate steps may be more smaller, more incremental. But these changes will not happen overnight precisely because they've taken so long to take root, these you know, structures. So, but I think in the short term, what you need is, in a sense, a strong analytical understanding of how the next steps will lead on in the right direction. So I think the programmatic, you know, um, the programmatic challenge is to have a clear-cut understanding of how we get from here to there. And so the next step is how does one move in that direction. But I think what is generic to all programs about empowerment has to be how do we improve the quality of women's participation? How do we include, how do we deepen women's ability to participate? And that is something that the program can do almost, you know, fairly soon. Because the program itself is a site of participation. So if the program simply delivers things as an external force, it is doing nothing to challenge, you know, the exclusion of women from decision making and noise and so on.